Hello, and we are live again from the creative cow shed. I wish we could actually be in a cow shed. That would be more genuine, wouldn't it? The creative We can cow work shed. on the special effects. <laughs> yeah, we need some creative cow shed backgrounds. Um, so this week, we're talking all about email marketing software, of which we deal with lots and lots of different platforms because we work with lots of different clients. And, you know, we... We actually, I don't think we have an out and out favorite, which I think will come out in conversation. Um, mm. That as yet, with all th as with all things marketing, we haven't quite found like the perfect um, system. But I think we'll have a bit of a discussion in terms of what we like, what we don't like, um, and what we use because we've gone a bit left field actually mm. we, we're using something that's relatively unknown at the moment but are enjoying um and sort of testing the boundaries of um so yes yeah, so we will be today talking about emails and actually we talked a lot about how to utilize all your email um marketing a couple of weeks ago and actually this is kind of the the technical side of that conversation we know that we need a mailing list but this is the techie element of actually how to build that list um so what's your what's your experience of the software itself what have you used in big corporates oh gosh lots of different things mailchimp everybody yeah. You work in almost any business, someone there's MailChimp floating around somewhere. It's been around a long time. It used to well, be one um, of the only options. <laughs> yeah. So we oh, just use MailChimp. That's what there is. Um have used quite a bit of non-external software. So working in commerce and photography sales, a lot of the platforms have inbuilt mailing systems. Okay. That work in a similar way. And that's a big upsell for them is being able to offer the email marketing solution. So you're not trying to integrate with something separate, else, a separate one with your existing commerce platform, which is really great. If it's, if it's a good system, it saves another step. Um, and the, I think we'll probably call on this more, but one of the biggest frustrations for me with things like MailChimp is you, they dangle the carrot and you get so much for free and then, the price per subscriber suddenly skyrockets. Yeah. And depending on the business you're in, it can be really cost prohibitive because you might get a lot of signups. So a lot of the events work I've done, you can get a high, very, very high turnover of people per event. You could get a lot of a big spike in subscribers, but then not always the highest quality subscribers. Mm. So then you're weighing up, do I am I paying to keep these people on? Am I going to get additional sales? But that's stuff we can come on to but yeah definitely email to hubspot a little bit as a crm yeah um yeah those are the big ones really yeah i think mine's probably quite similar i've had more experience of things like active campaign and convert kit and things like that they're quite i would say they're quite americanized they mm. they fit with that sort of school of building your funnel um which 100 percent is what we need to be doing i think we just sometimes when people start to use things like convert kit or active campaign um can be a bit overwhelmed by the americanisms and the very it they are they look quite agricultural in their kind of they're not big and shiny like MailChimp is quite shiny. It's it's a drag and drop builder. You can build in, you know, you can write in HTML if you have that skill, but you don't have to. And I think as a result, some of the um, more, I would say some of the cleverer systems, the more flexible systems don't look as shiny and people get put off by that. They go, my emails don't look as shiny. And actually, if you take nothing from this other than the shinier your email looks, the less likely it is to make it through a spam filter. Just saying, just dropping a bomb. Yeah, the more the more elements there are in there, the more your email provider goes, hmm. Yeah. I like the look of this. Yeah. If you think about this a sieve that is protecting your emails from spam. 
um, the little ones will drop through like, hi, Charlotte, it's Alice. Nice to see you <laughs> yesterday. See you again next week. That will drop through because that's from me, a personal email address to you, your personal email address. We've had correspondence before, clearly safe. <laughs> a chunky, great, big email comes in full of images, full of links, full of it. Ooh, it's not going to get through. And actually, we, um, MailChimp is a nightmare for getting past people's spam filters. Um, there are certain things you can do to help with that, which is things like making sure your domain is verified, making sure your email addresses are verified. That's all sort of steps that, in fairness, they are pretty good at making sure you complete. Um, yeah. There is a little bit of know-how as to how to get it into your header tech, header code and things like that, but a bit of Googling and you can work out how to make that happen on most simple websites. Um, but uh, yeah, the one thing with email marketing is you are always going to come up against the spam issue. That is always going, there will always be a percentage that don't get to the end user because it's hitting spam. Um, particularly with things like double opt-in now. Um, you know, people sign up to your newsletter. They don't realize that they need to then go and look in their emails and then click the link in the email to confirm their subscription. They actually never subscribe. They think they have, but they, they aren't actually subscribed because they haven't done the double opt-in. Um, so just a, a very random comment of advice on your pop-ups that get people to sign up for newsletters is make sure it says please now check your emails and spam for the opt-in to make sure you are actually subscribed because you might not be yeah um, and it, it depends on the content of your emails and how you're getting those subscribers because a great way to get people to check is when you're offering a discount or a freebie or early access which is why i think we're seeing more and more of that since gdpr came in mm. because we need people to want to go into their emails yeah. and check that's why lead magnets have grown you know downloadable lead magnets have grown in popularity because it because you're saying to somebody i'm going to send this to your inbox so they go and look at it because that's where the value is landing if the the shiny penny is landing in their inbox they're going to go there and and follow the instructions and look for that email even if it's in their junk um if it's just a simple you know that's it they may not they may not make their way um so do signpost people to go and look for their missing the missing link in actually signing up for their email um, and if you don't know if you've got double opt-in on your um mailing list just go go in and have a look at your settings but equally you could just sign up as a dummy subscriber and see what happens just out of interest and in um, your experience who would you say are good for that who make it easy to be gdpr compliant i do like convert kit I think ConvertKit's very good. Um, Active Campaign are good. Um, uh, who else is? Who else do I like? Um, well, who we use actually. Um, so this is this is revealing who we are now using. Flowdesk. We are using a company called Flowdesk, who are I would say the sort of Squarespace of the. Um, they're, they're sort of that kind of very chic looking company. And I would say they are one of the exceptions to the rule of if it looks big and shiny, it might not get through spam filters. Um, Flowdesk are, it's run by two very brilliant young women and they have managed to get the balance between um, a beautiful look, and that's why a lot of photographers have gone for Flowdesk. Um, I know certainly Evie uses Flowdesk, I think. Um, does Beth use Flowdesk as well? Um, sure. We certainly know of a, a handful of photographers who are now using Flowdesk. And we went for Flowdesk because um, it does all the techie things that we need it to do in terms of clever um, funnels and things like that. Um, it's a flat rate. 
every month. So we're paying, you know, pay pay the same amount every month. It looks beautiful. It it plays well with as an integration. So it plays well with Zapier. It plays well with um, our website, which is a Squarespace website. It it plays it plays nice, even though it's a new, relatively new contender. And it's and they it is a drag and drop editor, but it tries to keep everything quite text based. And actually, text based is really what we what we want to be doing with emails now. Um, so I I do like Flowdesk, and it does seem to get through spam filters. Alice Benham uses that's who I that's who I was just trying to think. Alice Benham mm. uses Flowdesk, and her emails always come through to me. Um, so that's a, a, a big bonus and hers is content I really want to see so um yeah so I think MailChimp is probably the worst um from my experience um the, the benefits to MailChimp are if you're just starting out and you don't want to part with any cash um the basic MailChimp isn't bad um as we say with everything, if you don't have brand guidelines in place, it could end up being very disconnected in terms of the visuals. You can make um, a mess. It's really easy to make a, a hot mess in Melton because it's like, oh, change the colour of this, put an image there. And yeah. the recipe for disaster. Absolutely. Which is why there's, I can't remember the name of it, there's one that's a completely free text-based and it's run by MailChimp. Is it mail? Um, it's not mail light, is it? Mail light. No, it's, that. it's really basic HTML emails. I'll yeah. try and find it while you're extolling the virtues of uh, Flowdesk. Chitter chattering. Um, yeah, yeah uh, mail light is one I haven't actually touched upon. Um, mail light is sort of the. It was the big competitor against Mailchimp, and mm. a lot of people really like mail light because. You can't do, again, you can't do a whole heap. Um, but for a lot of people, that's a good thing. Um, you know, it does sort of, it does push you towards just quite simple emails. Um, the only thing I would say with it is I'm not a massive fan of its editor. Um, I have done some campaigns on MailerLite and it felt a little bit clunky. Um, the, the one thing that, I will always say, we say it about websites, we say it about e-commerce, we say it about social media, use the things that you can use, the things that make sense to you. Because yeah. if you've got an email system that you don't understand or doesn't work in the way that your brain works, um, you're never going to use it. You're going to go, oh God, sending an email is a real pain in the backside. No. And we do a lot for clients. Um, is taking their brand guidelines and creating them an email template. You know, it sounds like a super simple thing, but actually getting the balance of making sure it works in light and dark mode, your favorite job, um, <laughs> to making sure you can see the brand, but it's not like slap you around the chops too in your face. Um, and actually that's one of the things that we, we do a lot with people is help them get their, you know, we might not be running their email campaigns, but we actually help them get their emails sort of templated up so that they can then just simply go in and basically edit the text. And maybe if there's an embedded image or an embedded video, they can swap that in and out. But it's just making sure that they are representing their business in a professional manner that reflects their brand, their branding and their brand guidelines. Um, so do go and take the time to set yourself up some templates because that means when you have a flash sale or you suddenly need to close your e-commerce site because you're not very well or you're going on holiday or whatever, you can literally just go in and type a quick email and press send and you're not thinking, oh God, my logo has gone wonky or that's jumped to there or what? what is my cut? What is the the uh, the hex code of my you know navy blue bit of my logo because you know these things sometimes can be a real faff and a real time because you know when we're talking about automating and saving time having your brand your colors and perhaps your your text as well you know your your font as well set up in your 
um, in your whatever email marketing system you're using can save you so much time because if you go and look for your brand guidelines every time you're wasting at least five minutes per email um so that is that's a big one um so having a, a system that allows for that you know there are some that are better at that than others uh flowdesk is very good at that um flowdesk works in if squarespace works for you from a um sort of how it computes and how it all works i would say Flowdesk would be a nice one to use in complement to that. They yeah, they're very compatible style wise. Yeah, stylistically they're compatible. Um, usability wise, I'd say they're pretty compatible. They're they're quite visual in terms of you know if you are somebody who can work out you know oh that button will do that because it just that's just how it it's just how it flows. Then it will work for you. If you want something that will really hold your hand. Um, then i mean in fairness mailchimp will hold your hand it will yeah. answer all of your questions you know it has little um question marks next to everything and it'll tell you what all the buttons do um things like convert kit and active campaign they don't i i don't feel like they help you very much in the system themselves but they are used by a lot of marketing professionals and you know there are loads and loads of forums and youtube tutorials and all sorts that can help you um make you know make something happen or look at how something that's works. a good point actually is do, i think we said this before about using like web builders and all sorts of other stuff it's always worth having a little hunt and seeing who's got good resources yeah because it might not be their be resources good. but Generally yeah, there might be a really good YouTube community that put loads of videos out. There might be some really good forums. So just have a little look. If you'll toss up between a couple of different ones you want to try, they're both in your budget. You're like, oh, yeah, I quite like both of these. Just a bit of hunting around. What kind of things are cropping up? What kind of issues are people having that people are then having to write a tutorial to solve? Because that yeah. can tell you quite a lot about this software great example is um writing an email for a client and i wanted to get their i wanted to get the branding right and i wanted to get the look and feel right and um they use convert kit so if they're watching this they'll know that it's for them <laughs> that it's them that <laughs> and i think i said to you I, can't, I just can't get this to like can't get it to work properly and this is early days when um i'd done i'd worked with convert kit previously but not overly recently and when you're working with loads and loads of different tools sometimes you're like oh god i re such and such refer to it as this some yeah. people refer to email uh, like audiences as audiences some people say lists some people say subscribers some people say groups like segment everyone uses different terminology and sometimes they have the same terminology but they mean different things which is really frustrating um so we might we might have to work out like a glossary of terms yeah. for everybody uh, i certainly have one in my head of like no if you're in mailchimp it means this if you're in active campaign it means this if you're in flowdesk it means this um but i couldn't quite get uh the template that i was building to look right and I think I said this to you, I was like, I'm going to have to HTML this. <laughs> and I am not a coding queen. I am a coding avoider. You know, I can do a bit of header code to make something work. And I can insert some custom CSS if I really have to. But I don't love it. And I don't really <laughs> understand it. Um, and I managed to, I think when I sent that, I sent a message to you being like, I'm potentially going to have to wave a white flag shortly and go, I can't do it. And actually. Um, couple of tutorials and I'm not shy I'm not afraid to say I had to watch a couple of tutorials I had to have a YouTube video running on one screen like pause it and unpause it pause it and unpause it but now when I'm writing emails for this client I've got a template that works beautifully the buttons pop up in the right color and the right size the header image is the right one you know the borders are right everything's perfect and all I do is put the text in and it actually didn't take me as long as I thought it was going to when I realized I was going to have to write the code for this website, for this email. Um, so sometimes a bit of persistence, if you've got 
the time for the persistence is definitely worth it with some of these, you know, potentially not quite on the outside, so amateur friendly um, mm. email systems. You know, we don't, you can go out there and you can find, um, you can find MailChimp experts, MailerLite experts, all these people who actually, they, they pretty much purely work in one system. We aren't those people. We have to be dynamic, we have to be flexible. Luckily, we're pretty good at learning new things pretty quickly because we have to be quite dynamic all the time. Um, and um, I, you know, you can go to these experts and I would highly recommend if you are wanting to get a campaign built and you don't have time to do it yourself, um, have a look and see who's out there because it might be that an hour or two of their time gets you set up with all the templates you need to then go and make it happen. You're it's one of those things, it's worth laying the groundwork properly. Yeah. Because what you might find happens is you end up with thousands of subscribers. Say something goes really, really well and you're super successful, which is great. And then you've got all these subscribers, but you haven't tagged them logically. Oh. Then that <laughs> could, where did they come from? What product have they signed up to? It's quite a common one if you're running things like lots of different courses or lead magnets. Mm. And suddenly you realize you haven't kept track of where everyone's coming from. Or you've written a tag that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I, you, <laughs> I went yeah, into, um, and, and you have to be careful sometimes with integrations. So a bit of a um, cautionary tale, I suppose. We had a client and they wanted me to go in and write them uh sort of corporate guide corporate guidelines for usage of mailchimp um and put together basically this is how mailchimp is organized because i opened up their mailchimp and there were hundreds of tags and i'm not joking hundreds of tags there were so many incomplete profiles you know, people with no names, just literally just email addresses. They'd been dropped in. Don't know where from. Who knows? Um, duplicates. Um, people who were no longer members were tagged as members and all sorts. We worked out, or after a bit of a process of elimination, I came to the conclusion that a lot of the tags were being generated by Eventbrite, um. which was integrated with their MailChimp. And the, these are the things that you need to be aware of. When you plug other things into your mail, mail manager, they might start to do things. So you have to make sure that it is really clear, you know, how things are working. We're doing a, a project at the moment where um, another company is running one element and we're running the other element but we, we're obviously working together to make it all join up and we've had to be really careful that all the tag you know we're giving they tell us what tags they need and how that then sits in the funnel and we've got to make sure that the tag that we've actually entered is the tag that they're using because if we don't it won't work it will just it's like we'll lose everyone um so making sure that you have a, a sensible tagging system and actually sit down and write your guidelines right this is how i'm going to use it there has to be an you know first name surname email as a minimum um we need to know where they've come from that's one tag we need to know what events they've attended or what they've downloaded that's another set of you know there's all these sorts of things that it's worth going and actually organizing because if you grow your business to the point where you get an administrator, a VA, a PA, a secretary, an admin, you know, all the mar a marketing team or marketing consultants like us. We don't want to walk in and ask you 25 million questions because you've been running it in a way that you've kind of managed to make it all work, but it makes no sense to us. Um, so always, always try and future proof anything that you use. It's the same with a website. If you're using um, a website with, you know, WordPress is a perfect example. If you're using a WordPress website um, and you built it yourself, just be mindful that if you do strange things to make stuff 
align and, and look good that someone else might come along and go, what's gone on here? It doesn't mean what you've done is wrong. It just means that there's a lot of different ways to get to the same result. And not everybody does things in the same way. So if you can write down as you go, sort of your your sort of rule, your commandments of your of your mailing list, that can be really, really helpful when it comes to upscaling. We've just had a conversation with a lady from a fantastic lady, and she's wanting to upscale her business significantly. Um, and one of the things that she is has got to to utilize is a, is a mailing list. So we will be going in there and having a look at the demographics and everything like that. Um, and I'm pretty confident she's got that nailed. Like I, I know that I reckon we can go in and we'll we'll be able to see everything. Um, but there are clients where they go, yeah, I've got a mailing list, but I don't know. Just been people have just been added to it because they happened to have visited my website. I mean, I've actually sent them an email. Um, and in terms so, of the tagging and organisation of audiences and mm -hmm. segments. Who have you found makes that quite easy? Which software? If you're a, if you're a beginner, we're recommending someone who's DIYing it. Most, mm -hmm. you know what, tagging. Um, although it has different names on certain different systems, um, tagging and segmentation is something I would say across the board is pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, there's nobody that stands out to me as really really useless at it. Um, a lot of the time tagging is also connected to integrations. So like I mentioned earlier, Eventbrite, but it might be um, your website, for example, and you just want to tag it as like website or a landing page. Now, if you're building your landing page within your email marketing software, you can then say anyone who hits that landing page and then signs up will be tagged with landing page one may 2021 or maybe the name of the lead magnet or something um so they're all pretty good at tagging it's just making sure that you're actually doing it not enough <laughs> you've led yourself into another question there oh god <laughs> uh, for those who for the only initiated what's a landing page and who again makes it easy to do and build okay so Landing pages, um, they can sit on your website. You built one the other day for a client, um, which actually sits within her website um, and has uh, buttons and bits integrated into it that then connect to other things. Or a lot of the email marketing systems will allow you to build landing pages within their software. So what it is, is sort of a standalone page that you hit and you will have hit so many of them over time um, you might not know that you're on a landing page but you're on a landing page and it might be for a download so I'll use us as an example we might have a free what we describe as lead magnet a free download that Could helps a glossary of mailing list terms a glossary of mate yes let's take that I'm if going, you want I'm, it let us know <laughs> yeah I want to um, be able to send people who are interested um, my glossary of terms and then in return for that I want their details so I can then send them marketing emails about upcoming create your uh, no, command your content courses hint hint um, and email marketing is something that we cover in command your content shameless plug <laughs> um, so and Charlotte, I'm sure we'll be able to put a link to command your content. A glossary would, oh no, Lindsay. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> now. You have to make it. It now. Um, uh, I'm sure Charlotte will be able to put a link to command your content in the ch in the chat whilst I'm chatting. Um, <laughs> so we we want you to download that. So we, the easiest way to do that is to build a landing page which reflects our guidelines. You can then put in your details. That landing page will then have attached to it an automation which sends you an email with the link to download your glossary. And then it will also save your details in our email marketing software and tag you as glossary download. 
So I know where you've come from. So I know that you're interested in, uh, in information about email marketing, um, which then allows me in the future to make tailored contact with you. So the way that we use tags is if, for example, you had come through um, our avatar, our free avatar builder, marketing avatar builder download, I know that you're interested in creating um, un and understanding your target audience. So I might specifically send you and all the other people tagged with um, avatar builder or uh, an invitation to a webinar that I'm going to do about um, developing your customer avatars. Handy. Um, so landing pages are um, very easy to build, I would say, in in a good chunk of the, you know, the mainstream. Uh, MailChimp is very, very easy. Um, I believe with MailChimp, it's a while since I've used the free version, but I believe in MailChimp, you may only be able to have one set up at a time. And I know they certainly have a limit on the number of automations you can have on the free version. Um, Flowdesk landing pages are very easy to use. They're very aesthetically pleasing. Um, so yeah, so again, I think um, things like landing pages and, uh, are not too bad. Where it can get clunky is automations. Mm. Um, MailChimp have recently done an update and their customer journeys and automations and, and flows are much, much better than they used to be. But you, there is a price tag attached to that. Um, if, you're, if you're on the free version, you're just not gonna get access to it. The annoying thing is I believe it will let you build it and then you get to the end and try to publish it and it goes, oh, sorry, no, you need to upgrade to actually be able to show people this. Um, Flowdesk is lovely for automations. It, it's very visual, it very much makes sense. Um, ConvertKit is very, very, very easy for automations. I, it's, actually my, um, it's actually my favorite for building um, automations and tags and linking in with zaps and everything. Like it's, it's a, it is a lovely system. Um, we've just had a, a Victoria, how do you feel Flowdesk gets on with Wix websites? That I wouldn't be able to specifically tell you. Um, we, haven't that particular. we haven't tried that particular integration. Um, the fact that it plays well with Squarespace makes me think that it would play well with Wix. The, what I would recommend to do is um, Google Flowdesk and Wix. Flowdesk, you can have, it's a two week free trial, isn't it? Mm. I believe. The, be the beauty of Flowdesk is it's actually inline code. So when we talk about it integrating with Squarespace, there's not a direct integration. So Squarespace is a MailChimp one. That's the only one they actually have. The way the Flowdesk one works is you get some inline code that you can then just copy and paste. So if you look on our website in our footer, that's just chunk code that we pasted and it puts it in there. And we designed the, in Flowdesk, you design that chunk of content to look visually similar to the website. Yeah. So it looks seamless. And the reason it works well with Squarespace is because they're very design similar. similar to, yeah. And I think with Wix, you shouldn't have an issue because it should be, you should just go to paste code, you can put a custom code block in and copy and paste the code. But like Alice was saying, try the free trial and give it a go. Mm. And, and the, the lovely thing that works. The, 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 big, the big winner for me with Flowdesk is when you take the free trial, you get access to everything. You don't get given like a little bit of this and a little bit of that. You get shown everything it can do which meant that when we took the free trial, like I know I said to you, Charlotte, if it doesn't do this, this and this, it's not gonna happen. And I was able to go in and actually test all of that and have everything built before the free trial even ended. And we had it plugged in and it was, you know, it was happy, um, which was really, really handy. Um, so I would, Victoria, if you're, um, I don't know what stage you're at, I know it's a, it's a new venture for you. So I'm hoping you're at the beginning of that journey and you will be able to go in and play. And, and 
and you're in a brilliant position because you can sign up for a couple of different free trials you know go and look what's out there go you know find what works for you and works well with wix wix actually has an internal emailing system which we have a um which we have a client who uses we might be able to connect you to actually um potentially for some sort of information you know, a couple sharing. of people who use wix is in built in built emails now yeah yeah they're really wix is really pulling their weight now um really really putting their weight oh a crm oh well <laughs> that's a whole new kettle of fish that's another which, life which we love um i'm a massive advocate for salesforce because it's a seriously powerful tool but it might be overkill um there are much better there are some very very good smaller crms now that are better for small like you know for small business salesforce i use in a big multinational which was fab fabulous, um, absolutely brilliant. Um, but that is digressing. We will um, maybe do some CRM stuff on a different day. Um, put that on the list. Um, Lindsay, really helpful. I used to use MailChimp because it's well known. Yeah, and that's why a lot of people go to MailChimp because it's like top of mind. Talk. This is a bit of a marketing thing, but people think. Uh, email marketing and go MailChimp. They have got that top of mind marketing absolutely nailed because even though we don't use MailChimp, if we were playing a word association game and somebody said email marketing, I'd go, yeah. you know, I re honestly, I would. Um, so they do do, um, they are really, really handy and they do get you going. And the one thing I would say, is it's actually not too difficult to move from one email marketing tool to another. So Lindsay, if you are thinking about moving, um, it's not as scary as you might think it could be. It's a it's a pretty straightforward download upload system. Um, so don't worry if you do feel that you need to change to something else. Um, it, it's not an an impossible task um and it's about working out like we we often talk about future proofing so it's about sitting down and saying right this is what my strategy looks like for the next six months this is what i want to do and want to offer people and then working out what works what is going to be able to do that job for you we did it we knew that we had you know online training coming we knew that we were going to be wanting to give you know give people access to more content um, we potentially needed to have a members area. So that's why Squarespace and Flowdesk suddenly offered us a little bit, you know, offered us what we needed. Um, and we also sat down and said, right, well, that's what we need for now, but what are we potentially going to need in the future? We sort of did some blue sky thinking, this is what we might need and made sure that they both ticked those boxes as well. So we don't advocate hopping around services but it isn't too difficult when you're relatively early, um, you know, in that journey. What is more difficult is obviously you'll have to rebuild landing pages. You will have to alter your, um, I, Lindsay, I don't, I think you might be a WordPress website. I might be totally wrong there. Um, you will have to go in and just change your sort of email sign up. Um, blocks on your website things like that that's the the slightly clunkier element to changing the actual moving of contacts is really really easy but you will have to go in and obviously redesign your emails redesign your landing pages and make sure that your your plugins are all working properly um but it isn't insurmountable yeah you are wordpress i thought you probably would yeah actually no yes i know you are i know you are <laughs> uh, that conversation um so yes, I think um, finding one that, that works for you um, in the, the short to medium term is really important um, because there is nothing worse than sort of seeing all your hard work in landing pages and things suddenly then disappear. Um, so yeah, definitely looking at that. Is there anything else, is there anything that we've missed? I mean, there's so again, this is one of those topics that we could literally talk about forever. Um, because it is a massive chunk of of what we do um more and more what we do actually i really love i love i love, I love an automation 
I love automations and flows and thinking about, I just love it. Uh, and it's how we're going to, it's how we're going to make the most of um, these sort of slightly closer relationships. And, and like I mentioned earlier, um, utilizing tagging to really tailor the content that people are receiving. You know, um, just thinking about Lindsay's business, you know, you've got you've got people like us who are members. You've got um, you've got consumers who are members. You've got you know foodie members. You've got so you can really tailor what you're sending people to make sure it's relevant and it doesn't hit a bum note with them. Um, so you know it's really exciting how we can tailor people's experience, and that's what at the end of the day we're always thinking about is how is how is this going to benefit and impact positively impact our customers and potential customers um and how can we use it um so so i get distracted by the comments here um always think about how it's going to benefit your end user at the end of the day or put you know future end user so guys just a top tip from you on where to start or is that all covered in your course we're talking tomorrow but i'm tempted oh <laughs> well um where to start we i mean we definitely so part of the course is establishing what's right for you and that's what's right for you from where to put them in the most energy from a social media perspective where to put the most energy from a, a, a mailing and marketing point of view pr point of view, all those things it's all about focusing the limited time that you have to protect that personal life because we all have to have downtime so taking that however many hours a week you've got and making sure that we are using it in the best way possible but where to start when it comes specifically to email marketing go into your inbox and look at what other people are using mm. you can quite often tell sometimes it will be in the signature i'm not obviously talking about like you know a direct email from me to you um we use outlook if anybody cares but <laughs> but have a look at some of the the um the emails that you're getting there, sales sales emails or sort of like you know generic marketing emails um sometimes you can see it in this in the signature like shopify or um mailchimp or what have you um see what Wix other people is pretty obvious as well yeah flow desk is a little bit there's there's a little yeah. thing at the bottom so or go to click the unsubscribe button yes and that will take you to their website <laughs> um so go so go and have a look what other people are using what what hits your inbox? I mentioned earlier, Alice Bennon's emails always hit my inbox. That's Simple. a good sign. Um, and the other thing is to sort of make a short list of the ones that you want to try and do honestly take the time to play with them, try them. Um, there are no, there are none that I would say like, oh my God, don't use it. MailChimp has its place, even though it's not my favorite, it definitely has its place from a usability perspective. Um, it just hits barriers down the line. Um, so there are also some good comparisons. I, now there is a comparison website. There's a blog or something. Leave it with me, I'll, I will go and, Charlotte, make that as something I need to remember to do. I will try and find there's somewhere, it might be one of the providers themselves that actually handily made a comparison of sort of what it costs to do different things and what's included and what's not. Um, worth trying even if you have no, yes, because if you've got no subscribers, it means you are in the perfect position to choose the one that you really, really want to use. Um, the subscribers element is, is actually fairly, null and you know it's, it's a it's a mute point because the subscribers you have has got no relevance to how easy you find it to build a landing page or to build an email um if you can't build the emails and you can't build the landing pages you're not going to have any subscribers so um so thinking about it's a bit like you know you i've got no followers on instagram well we need you to learn how to use Instagram first and then the followers will come. So um, so go and make sure it works for you. Um, 
and then you know limit it to two or three but also think about what you need out of that email system you're an e-commerce business so from an e-commerce perspective what is important um you know it's going to be you know good good contact it's going to be potentially retargeting things like that so have a think about that i if you're building in wix i would definitely look at the internal wix email as one of your go-to to look at because it, from the feedback that we've had on it it's not something we've personally used but the feedback we've had on it is it, it's good um so definitely look at that but yes anything else we've missed anything from anybody watching before we scoot off um charlotte what are we talking about next week oh that's a really good question this is again, how, <laughs> how quickly can i go on instagram stall and look it up and find out what it is and hopefully and you all we... know because we have we have posted but we can let you know we're going back to our favorite topic of values um yeah. we're talking about representing your values and how you can do that across different media yeah and that is such an exciting one again it links back like we will end up touching upon email marketing even within that because emails are a lovely way to show a little bit of more of yourself to your to your audience um so we will be discussing that next thursday um i hope you have a lovely holiday uh, what are, is everybody up to this bank holiday i am being i'm going to a barbecue and the weather appears to be nice um are you at a horsey event this week Shana? i am photographing horses all weekend which is not a shock to anybody oh and you're you're <laughs> up and down the country aren't you you're at summerford yeah. and then summer house and then yeah. summerford is yeah. that right yeah so um Great if fun. you are if anybody happens to be competing at summerford or summer house this weekend you will see charlotte hopefully not shivering for the first time this year soaking <laughs> wet you will probably be too hot and sunburned so there you go <laughs> Can't wait. um so have a wonderful bank holiday. We will see you next Thursday to talk about values. Um, and we will, um, any questions, of, as always, any questions, let us know. And we will come back to you with, uh, if I can find that price comparison blog or wherever it was, I will post that. And yes, sun cream, definitely sun cream. And the rain, <laughs> because you never know. Um, and Lindsay, I will start working on your glossary. <laughs> we will see you next we week. Got <laughs> we yeah. have got homework. <laughs> Bye.